Very popular in certain countries like Canada and Russia, places like that. So it's not, it's just looks a simple fly, just like a hairy bushy fly. But tying, they're doing the body. Uh, I mean, I'll show you a body here I've done. This one here. Getting this nice tight deer hair body. And I'm not the best in the world at doing this. Hook I'm using, very popular hook, a partridge hook, is a CS42, this one here. And it's a size one's a size six. So basically, these are produced just to tie these these flies. Thread, just get you a good strong thread. This I mean, this is a a Gutman thread I'm using. It's a black six o thread. And I'm just going to start at the eye to take the thread halfway down. I'm just making sure there's a layer of thread there. And then I'm going to come back up for the f basically the front part of the wing and the wing is going to be calf tail this is the calf tail here and I'm just going to bring out enough to form the, f the wing that goes over the eye now some people like to stack the hair some don't it's entirely up to yourself uh, if you take it off and it looks okay fine but just to show you I'm going to slightly I'm going to stack it up now you can get it really stacked up nice and straight, it's up to yourself. If you do, if you feel it's maybe too straight, this is not too bad, this is actually quite tapered, it's not bad, then just leave it. If it's not, you can actually pull some of the fibres out or taper it yourself. The length, normally the forward wing is slightly longer than the back, but I've seen them both same lengths, I've seen them different is I think it's entirely up to yourself. Now I'm going to tie at least the shank length over the eye, the short of the shank length anyway, and leave a head like a head, if you look under there, enough to form a head. And then I'm going to nice and really tight, come down, come in my scissors, just Taper the cut slightly so that I get a taper towards or the onto the shank. Just gonna work my way down. Just as tight as you can. You want it nice and tight. You don't want really. You don't want slack turns. Keep going. And now I'm gonna come right to the point just before it goes round the bend. That's the way that's working out. If you, I'll take that out so you can see. Strain it a wee bit. Just before the barb, or between the point and the barb, and this hook. And then I get some more of the calf tail. Now, see when you're taking it off the skin, cut it really close to the skin. You don't want uh, space, or you don't want any half cut fibres because they just get in your way for your next fly. Again, I'm just going to lightly stack these fibres. Some like it, like them short, keep them stumpy, or they can much the same, say the same length as the forward wing. It's up to yourself. Catch this on the top. Again, keeping it nice and tight. And again, I'm going to trim this at a slight taper, so just at the point where I tapered the hair in the body. I'm just going to take this up, making sure this is well tied in. You see it's starting to, it should be reasonably balanced. That's not too bad. Now I'm going to come back down, I'm going to tie in, this is a saddle hackle, now this is a fiery brown, dyed fiery brown, use hot orange, you can natural brown, just using the fiery brown, so, and I want 
where the notch will cover the fibres going forward. Now the saddles you can use quite a few like micro barbs, mates, things like that. Uh, obviously whiten, they're very good. Then to protect the wing and the hackle, yeah, that's it tied in. I'm just going to use this the, the micro pour tape. And you can use masking tape just to protect it. And you just put this round so that when you're cutting the deer here, you're not going to cut the, the tail or the hackle off. But you must put a tape on that you can get back off, so... And I can get the micro the micro pour off. So fold it around to the point where I want the body to start. Protects it, and then get this stuff in the chemist. It's a wee bit short that bit. or pharmacy, depending on what country you come from. And there we are, it's already. Now to the deer hair. Now, it's usually the belly hair is a kind of one normally I would, or something that you'd get. This here is a piece I got that was quite light tipped, dyed grey, just to enhance the colour. You want it quite stiff and hollow. You really need that to get the to form the body. I mean, you may have to go through quite a few patches to find the, the deer hair that you like. Mo shops that I say sell, if you mention that you're tying bombers, they should be able to help you out. Now, obviously, you want enough deer hair that when you, I'm spinning it onto the body, that it goes all the way around. Take it off. Make sure there's no fluff in, in the the deer hair. It'll spin much better if you do that. So tying it on here and I'm going to come around with a couple of loose turns. Just pull it nice and slow at first and then allow it to roll. Keeping the thread tight, wind it through the cut ends at the back just slightly. Always keep a hold of the thread, don't let the thread go at this point. A couple of turns or so making sure it's not going to pull out. Now, I don't have a packer. You can buy these things to pack the deer hair a bit tighter. Yeah, I'm just going to use my fingers. I don't tie many bombers, so, but I should really buy a, a some sort of deer hair packer just to get it right. Again, here's another piece. To get it tighter, but you just have to work away with what we've got. Again, a couple of turns, allow it to slightly tighten, and then allow it to roll all the way around. Come through, nice tight turns at that point. And just take your time and drawing the deer here towards the drawing it back. Get yeah, two or three turns in there so that it tightens on to them. And this is where you could use your fingers to pack the deer here, make it much tighter. And then for your next bunch. And then you just keep working away. All the way up. just have to make sure we get it nice and tight and uh, make oh you want it tight all the way up just take your time the eye just pull it stack it or pack it really tight back try and keep the area your tiny deer here in clean
And I say when you're cutting the deer hair, make sure you always uh, you can see in the patch here. I'm cutting it right down to the bottom, so there's no half cuts or anything there. Place your deer hair on again. Come round. A couple of loose turns, and then allow it to roll. Bring your thread through it. See where you are. Now I'm going to see if I can maybe get some more in there. Nice and tight. Yep, can get another bunch in there. Round one, two, allow it to roll. And then I'm going to lift my wing up here, take my thread push all the deer hair towards the back just watch it and you bring your thread through just going to whip finish off at this point and then you want to start to bring the deer hair out straight. Make sure that none of it's twisted, especially around the hook area. And, uh, you can use, I've got two pairs of scissors that I like to use. I've got a large pair of curved scissors, this one, and the small ones. I mean, I, I like either, I can work with either, it's up to yourself. If I mean you can come in, there's the shape in your mind, this carrot type shape body. Uh but firstly just get the, the, the bulk of it away so you can see where you are. And I'm just gonna do it on the vice so you can see. Because normally when I'm trimming uh, I take it off the vice so just to show you what I'm doing, just to adjust the idea of the actual body, so just be careful of that first cut. And you do make a mess. A lot of mess. <laughs> you can't go away with not making a mess with deer here. So, it's all the way around. Now, when you taper it towards the back, or towards the tail, Watch what you're doing. It's one of these type of flies, it's very easy to make a mistake. You have to have a lot of confidence in what you're doing. And you need to go keep looking, stand back and see what you're doing. Using the natural curve of the scissors, or the, not the natural curve, but the curve of the scissors, just to try and get the shape. See where we are. Now, I've got my big pair of scissors. As I say, normally I like to take it off and then start trimming. The big scissors, I get a nice long. I'll get a longer cut, so I can keep it nice and tight. You have to be brave, so I mean, that's, even though this is a one of these type of flies, you can uh, cringe about tying. I actually enjoy tying these flies. Well, I've enjoyed tying these ones anyway. And if you have the right type of deer here, it makes a big difference. You've got to basically take the advice from shortly you're buying it. You just explain you're looking for the stiff deer here, hollow deer here, to form these bodies. You have to be very patient with what you're doing. Oop. Let's 
see where we are. And what I'm doing here is looking at the edge of the body and there's a white, as I turn my, my vice I can see it. I'm just following that edge. Goes up, and uh, basically then remove. What I like to do is remove the, obviously the tape. Just watch when you're removing the tape. You don't pull the hackle off. Just take your time. Masking tape or this type of tape. You just have to be careful. I mean, it's as not as sticky as normal tape. There we are. But you need it sticky enough that it's going to protect your wing and your tail. Now what I want to do now is tie in my thread and I'm just going to use a, a uni thread in black so just bring your thread into the eye. Is there any wee fibres that may be in there just you can tidy them up. Take them back. Take away your waste piece. And then wind your hackle up. Now, the number of turns is entirely up to yourself. It's basically uh, maybe five or six times anyway. As you can see, with the hackle fibers facing forward, just take it through, let it find its place. All the way up to the eye. There's come in at the eye, hold the wing out the way, and I'm just gonna catch it with the thread. Trim away the waist, just watch your thread. Delete anything that's maybe going to go forward to the eye, just tidy it up with drawing it back with the thread. And basically there's your bomber. I mean there's a lot of work in tying these flies, I mean they're fun to tie but you've really got to plenty of patience when you're tying these, especially when you're trimming the body, I mean I would probably say 20 minutes a fly at least anyway and that's just getting ready and putting the hackles. Now as you can see here I've got the orange hackle the version, I've got one here which works really well, it's just slightly brighter. Uh, there's all different colour combinations of bombers nowadays. Uh, there you go, that's just the nicest, the most popular one. Uh, although what I want to do is put some varnish into the head. All the way around. Now, the more you tie these, the more the better you'll get, obviously. And I sat and tied 10 there. So I was getting a bit of practice when we were tying 10. Uh, now, to give you an idea, this patch of deer here is all, that's all I've got left out of 10. So you do use the deer hair up. <laughs> and then clean the eye. Another coat or two of varnish, and then the fly's finished. And there you go. And that there's your bomber. They say, good fun to tie, but takes up a lot of time. So, I hope you enjoyed that. <laughs>